function which is a member of a particular class, so then it, be, it becomes a method, or you can have just functions which are, uh, you know, which are just another structure, uh, you know, which is a block of expression which results um, or which, re which returns a particular value, one single value, right? So, uh, so the difference between a method and a function, so methods are always, always invoked on objects, but um, you know, to call a function, you don't need to reference any objects, right? So um, in Scala, you can create functions also. So the way you create functions is by using a keyword, uh, DEF, right? So we define a function, something like this. So I'll say define area is a function which takes uh, one parameter called as radius which is of type integer, okay, and it returns a double, right? So this is how you define a function. So you are saying, uh, now I mentioned functions are sort of equivalent of uh, any uh, data type, right? So you can do things like you can assign something to a function. So I am defining a function here called as an area which takes one parameter which is an integer and it is returning a double as its output, as its return value, okay? So for this, I'm assigning a block of expressions, right? So I'll say uh, this is something like pi, okay, um, pi r square, right? So area of a circle is a pi r square. So I'll say pi into um, radius into radius. Right? So basically I defined a function and I'm assigning some expression to it. So if you notice here, uh, I have created um, a, a, you know, a variable called area, which is nothing but a function. So this is, takes uh, you know, an integer as a parameter and returns a double. Now, similarly, I can also write a write a recursive function. So a function which calls itself is called as a recursive function, right? So let's create a recursive function example also. So I'll say, um, so I'll define a function called as factorial. It's the classic example for <laughs> recursive function, right? So I'll say factorial of, uh, you know, n, it takes n as a parameter which is an integer, okay, and it has to return an integer, okay, where I'll assign an expression if, now you need to have a condition, right, to exit from this, so if n is equal to zero, right, so you'll have to return one, so I satisfied the first condition, uh, which is the exit, now you have to uh, define the recursive condition. So else, uh, basically, call um, n into factorial of n minus 1, okay? Very simple, is it not? So this way, you can create a factorial function. So this is pretty uh, straightforward, right? So now uh, you can also provide default values for the function arguments, okay? So when you say default values, so when you're invoking a function, okay? So if you are uh, not providing any parameter, so then the default arguments will be taken as a, uh, you know, uh, arguments for that particular function, right? Say, for example, I'll say define a function called as concatenate string, okay? So it takes in, let's say, one parameter argument one, okay, which is of type string, and another parameter argument two, which is also of type string, Okay, 
and um, another parameter which is also of type string. Okay, so I will say is equal to ARG1 plus ARG2 plus ARG3. Okay, so if you can observe here now, um, I created a, a you know a, a function which takes basically three arguments, and uh, so since I'm basically returning uh, you know uh, the um, you know the aggregated aggregation of all these three strings, so the return value is considered as a string here, right? So what the result of this particular expression? Right? Now here, I can provide certain default values. So supposing if I say on cat str, if I'm saying, uh, okay, so now observe what happens. Okay, so it gives it gives an error because I'm uh, the function is expecting three arguments, but I'm only passing one argument. Okay, so now uh, I can, uh, you know, um, change this so I can provide some default values here. So I'll say uh, the second argument is um, I'm going to do one. provide some default values here. Okay, so do the same thing, okay. So, oh sorry, I think I made a mistake. Where did that go? I think I lost it. Anyway, let me type that. So I'll default this to hello. No. Okay, and uh, I'll do the same thing. Okay, so now if I try to invoke this, okay, with a single parameter, now you can see here, uh, I'm still able to get that. So you can basically have default arguments to a function. Now, um, Scala also has, uh, uh, you know, um, the concept of procedures. Procedures as same uh, are nothing but functions. The only difference between a function and a procedure is that the procedures don't return any value, right? So a function uh, is is basically a block of expressions which returns some value. Okay. So when you have some, uh, you know, uh, a function which doesn't return any value, then it is called as a procedure. Okay. So in Scala, uh, you can you have the concept of procedures also. So if in Scala there is a function without the preceding equal to symbol, right? Say for example, in this case, for an, when you're defining a function, you're providing the uh, you know structure of the function, which is like you know the name and the parameters you're passing, uh, and you have this equal to symbol and you're assigning some 
block of expressions there, right? So if you don't assign this equal to symbol, then it becomes a procedure, and a procedure need not return any value. Okay. Say for example, um, I would say define um, a rectangular area, right? So that was basically uh, uh, for circles. So let's have a area for a rectangle. So this is going to take two parameters. So I'll say length, which is of type float, okay, and uh, breadth, which is of type float again, okay. Now here I'll I'm not going to assign anything. I'll not use this equal to operator. And if I don't use that, and if I simply provide a block of expressions, okay, so then this becomes a procedure. So for example, I'll say val area equal to okay length into breadth, right? And I will say print area. Right? So within this, I'm just performing some action, but I'm not returning any value. Right? So I did not do an equal to symbol here. Right? So if you remove that equal to, simply it becomes a procedure. Now if you observe, okay, a procedure, uh, you know, if you observe here, so this is nothing but taking two parameters. Okay, but it says the return value is unit. Okay, so if you recall, I mentioned Scala is a pure object-oriented programming language, so everything is an object, right? So in this case, uh, there is no return value here. So how can there be a return value here? So basically, that that return value is called as unit. So this is equivalent of uh, your null in Java, right? So that null or the uh, is also an object in Scala, right? So if you have a function, you have some explicit return values, and for procedures, your return value will be basically a unit or which is sort of null, which is equivalent to null in Java. Now, uh, the same rules, see, other than the fact that there is no return value, the same rules of, uh, you know, variable uh, number of arguments like having a mixture of named and unnamed arguments all those rules apply to um, procedures as well right so um, you know uh, in case if you are wondering why why in some cases you are um, uh, you know having you know uh, single vari uh, you know parameter and some cases you may have double parameters and so on so basically that default oh, sorry the variable number of parameters a function or a procedure can take is because of the mixture of named and unnamed variables.